Hello there, my fellow Battletech aficionados, and welcome back. Welcome back to another series within the confines of this universe, which is gonna be non-Battle Mech related. Instead, we're gonna talk about the rather unsung heroes of ground warfare, aka the combat vehicles. I already did an overview video on this hugely broad topic, but this video is gonna be the start of the series proper, at least in my opinion. I'm also gonna take a moment and try to explain my approach to it. You see, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of types of vehicles and models of vehicles in Battletech. I dare say there is enough of them to even rival the amount of battle max. So, in order to present all of these to you, in what I hope will be a cohesive way, I decided to split the videos into weight categories and then split them again into actual vehicle types. So, like the title says, today we're gonna talk about mostly APCs of the light category. But that also means we can talk about medium APCs in another video. Just like we're gonna talk about light gunships, or heavy tanks, etc. That being said, I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Anat The Anat Armored Personnel Carrier is an early Dark Age design, which was first produced by Clan Hell's Horses in 3092. These guys wanted a fast vehicle that can handle multiple terrain types. For this reason, the vehicle was given a wheeled chassis and limited amphibious equipment. The wheeled chassis can handle even more terrain types than a hovercraft, and the amphibious equipment allows it to cross small bodies of water. Protected by 3.5 tons of armor, the Anat can transport infantry units into hostile fire with some degree of safety. This vehicle would prove to be very popular with Clan Hell's horses, and then they traded them extensively with Clan Wolf in Exile and then Clan Seafox. The Sea Foxes in turn then sold them to any interested party. This allowed the spread of the Anat throughout the Inner Sphere. As the main role of the Anat is to transport infantry, the vehicle was mounted with a 5-ton infantry bay. However, the vehicle is only lightly armed. Just one pair of micropulse lasers are carried in the turret. As a result, the Anat is frequently paired with other vehicles and even battle mechs with much heavier weaponry. The Maltier, or the Maltier, I guess if you want to take the French pronunciation. Just like its larger cousin, the Maxim, the Maltier was a Starlink Defense Force hover APC, capable of transporting an entire platoon of infantry, seeing extensive action during the second half of the 26th century. The design was believed to be lost forever until a young Torian farmer on Solano stumbled upon the remains of a Starlink storehouse while plowing his fields in 3019. His discovery provided the Torian Concordat with significant volumes of technical information, weapons and vehicles, including several multiers. The scientists of the Concordat studied the recovered equipment and attempted to replicate the designs, with the Maltier being one of the simplest and relatively straightforward to copy. Thus, the Torian Defense Force has been using the Maltier as an infantry transport since before the Fourth Succession War, mainly in actions against pirates. Built around a conventional chassis, the Maltier uses a 50 series internal combustion engine which is relatively easy to obtain even in the periphery. With a top speed of around 150 kph, it is able to deploy its infantry troops more quickly than many other vehicles, minimizing the time it has to spend in the actual combat zone. While the Maltier's engine, targeting and communication systems were easy enough for the Concordat to reverse engineer, the armaments and armor of the vehicle posed more of a problem as the Concordat lacked the technology know-how to duplicate ferrofibrous armor until the early 3040s. Also, the sophisticated Streak missile launcher had to be replaced by a conventional system, at least until Pinard managed to duplicate the Streak system in 3054. Just like many APCs, the Maltier carries a single defensive weapon, a Pinard Reaper Streak SRM-2 rack. The streak launcher refuses to fire, however, until a solid target lock is acquired, 
ensuring it maximizes the single ton of ammunition. The MHI Amphibious APC MHI, in case you're curious, actually stands for the manufacturer Michelson Heavy Industries. This was designed as an amphibious infantry transport for planetary militia and other secondary forces. It was conceived as part of the company's efforts to cash in on the post-Jihad era of militaries fully transiting to using more combined arms. It was produced in plants found on the worlds of Terra, June and Ruckbach for several factions. The vehicle's specialized ability to forge across water makes it very popular in militaries across the inner sphere. Designed as an infantry carrier, the main feature is obviously the infantry compartment. While the passengers are not intended to remain aboard for a long duration, its 8-ton capacity allows it to be flexible in transporting modest-sized infantry formations. The vehicle's standard 150-rated fusion engine gives it a decent speed and allows its crews to steer the vehicle away from the front line. Its 8 tons of armor are sufficient to keep the crew and the passengers safe from incoming fire. The other main feature of the vehicle is its ability to go fully amphibious, able to float and move anywhere in the water. With its only weaponry being its diverse optics extended range medium laser, the vehicle must rely on its escorts and infantry complement for additional protection. A separate version of this was created by the Republic of the Sphere. This variant sacrifices the infantry bay for a larger light fusion engine allowing it to reach a top speed of 96 kph. It does retain the ER medium laser and actually increases the weaponry by adding a pair of light machine guns on the turret. It is protected by 7.5 tons of heavy ferrofibrous armor and an Angel ECM suite. The full amphibious equipment is also present. However, the most deadly feature of this variant is the drone carrier control system which allows operators to control up to four drone mechs or vehicles like the Revenant. The Saxon The Saxon APC was meant as an update to some older APC models. Even with improved technology, old model APCs were simply too vulnerable and too slow. When the LAAF put out a request for new APCs, it was Cyclops Incorporated that responded with a favorable design. Thus, the first Saxons entered service with the second Sky Gods in 3070. The design was so successful that Cyclops couldn't keep up with the demand, so they licensed the Saxon to Defiance Industries and Quicksell Company. By the time of the Dark Age, thanks to its multiple licensing deals, the Saxon had become a standard transport throughout the inner sphere. One of the chief advantages of the Saxon is its great top speed of 162 kph. This enables it to quickly get in and out of hotspots. A 5-ton infantry bay allows the APC to carry a platoon of unarmored infantry or a squad of battle armor. 9 tons of armor gives it a toughness matched only by very few light vehicles, and thus protect the infantry inside as well as the vehicle itself. The only weapon of the Saxon is a Kicker 2 machine gun mounted in the turret. This does give it a wide, if short-range, field of fire. A modification replaces the machine gun with a medium laser. Another variant was produced by Defiance Industries, which transforms the roomy infantry compartment into a mobile headquarters. An extra 3 tons of communications gear helps the officer keep in contact with his troops. The turret of this one carries a pair of ER medium lasers and a tag to discourage attacks. Another variant was produced by the Quicksell Company and turns this APC into a field hospital. It features two full trauma centers and double the amount of ammo for the machine gun. The Fang Ta This one was introduced rather quietly by Earthworks Incorporated before the Jihad. It was a rather inexpensive transport vehicle manufactured in their facility on Tiber. The combination of low cost and simple construction would pave the way for the Fangta to see service throughout the various states of the former Free Worlds League, and then even later after the League was reconstituted. The main advantages the Fangta enjoyed over older designs was higher speed and better protection, the latter due to three tons of valiant chainmail ferrofibrous mounted onto the vehicle. 
It also mounted a pair of Magna Mark IV ER small lasers in a central turret. Unfortunately, the turret mechanism was plagued with problems thanks to the bulky linkages, leaving the turret prone to freezing in place after just light damage. And finally for today, the Winterhawk. The Winterhawk APC was originally introduced to the market in 3059 by Skaltek Associates of Einarx to a frosty reception from the Lyran Alliance military. The use of a fuel cell engine in the Winterhawk was an unusual one for the era, and as such the LAAF command mistrusted the Winterhawk. That left Skaltek selling the Winterhawk to a mix of corporate security forces, mercenaries and backwater militias. However, the orders for it did pick up after the start of the Jihad. By 3119, the use of fuel cell engines in military vehicles had become a lot more common, and the Lyran military was in need of a new hover infantry transport. As a result, the military had production of the Winterhawk restarted, and the low logistical burden of the same fuel cell, which was unwelcome 60 years earlier, now became a popular feature. The level of demand from the LCAF completely distorted the supply of Winterhawks to the security, militia and mercenary markets which had supported the Winterhawk in the earlier decades. On the other hand, it did make the Winterhawk a very common sight in the LCAF infantry regiments. Although it only mounted 2.5 tons of standard armor, its Skoltek 115 engine made it very capable of speeds of up to 160 km an hour making the Winterhawk fast and agile. Ironically, one of the most popular features of the Winterhawk was not the speed. Ironically, one of the most popular features of the Winterhawk was not the speed, but rather the ergonomically designed infantry compartment, which proved to be very appealing to the transported infantry, particularly the fold-in cooler installed as standard. The Winterhawk mounted two weapon systems and a four-ton infantry bay, Mounted in the turret was a Coventry light autogun, while mounted on the front of the vehicle was a single SureShot 2 SRM-2 launcher. Stored inside the body of the vehicle was a ton of ammo for the SureShot and half a ton of ammo for the light autogun. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about some light APCs from Battletech for today. This approach to vehicle is still experimental, if you will. So if you folks have any thoughts or suggestions on how I could do better, feel free to write them down in the comments below. Now, as far as today's vehicles are concerned, which one did you find the most interesting? Which one did you find the most useful and why? Again, feel free to share your thoughts below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a peaceful day. This is GDN signing off.